A shadow bank covers a huge range of definitions really. It's everything from uh, a, an insurance company, an asset manager, a hedge fund, a private equity firm, a private debt firm, any type of business that engages in bank-like activity. Shadow banks matter because they're massive. Uh, this is an industry now getting on for $72 trillion, uh, almost triple the size it was a decade ago. And despite perceptions that uh, it declined in the aftermath of the financial crisis, that only applies to one section of the shadow banking industry, namely the so-called sieves and conduits, which went from a $400 billion industry to nothing uh, virtually overnight. Uh, other areas of shadow banking, particularly uh, in the direct lending field, have expanded very quickly. Shadow banks are operating in many parts of the world. Um, particularly notable uh, is the expansion rate in China and also in parts of Europe and the US. There's particular concern, I think, in China where it's felt that the types of shadow banking, the types of direct lending activity outside the mainstream banking industry are growing at a breakneck speed and nobody really knows how it's going to end. Shadow banks do a vast range of things from very simple lending to small and medium-sized businesses, for example, right through to very complex asset structuring. In the financial crisis, they became infamous because of some of that structuring, because they hid and magnified a lot of the risk that was actually in the banking system. Today, most of their activity is in the far simpler area of, of direct lending, but even so, the rate of growth is causing concerns. Shadow banks are largely unregulated. They've prospered in the aftermath of the financial crisis as regulations on the traditional banking sector have tightened. Now though, as the rate of growth accelerates, regulators around the world are showing increasing inclination to clamp down on the shadow banking sector, um, improve their monitoring and maybe write new rules. But as a quid pro quo, there are also proposals that shadow banks should gain access to the type of bank facilities that are available, for example, liquidity from the central banking industry.